So on Mormonism, we're going to learn about Joseph Smith. Um, I asked you to read some stuff. I asked you to read some chapters from uh, Under the Banner of Heaven. This is by John Krakauer. John Krakauer wrote um, the book Into the Wild about the dude who, like, I think he's from California, who goes off to Alaska. You know, he eats, he's out there in the wilderness forever and he eats fucking mushrooms and dies. <clears throat> um, he's a great author. Uh, he writes literary nonfiction. He wrote Under the Banner of Heaven, which is a great book. Um, I read that book actually when I first came out to Oregon to visit the University of Oregon. Um, after I visited UO, I went out to the coast and I was camping and I was walking on a path and I was walking and reading it. Like walking and reading at the same time. I was so into the book. It has dual narratives. The narratives are of the formation and foundation of the Mormon church. Okay, the Church of Latter-day Saints, and the tale of a few brothers who belong to a fundamentalist, extremist Mormon group who go on a violent rampage. And it's a, called, you know, Under the Banner of Heaven, A History of a Violent Faith. And it really talks about, you know, the violence that the, that the um, Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, has faced and also partaken in. And it looks at the history of plural marriage um, and, and just like the history of the church. It's a really great fucking read. I really love it. I just, I just really found it fascinating. Anyways, so Joseph Smith Jr., he is the first prophet of the Church of Latter-day Saints, and he is the president. I mean, he founded the religion, as we're going to see um, in this episode of South Park, if you're unfamiliar with the story. But basically, um, you know, he um, got people uh, in upstate New York to believe uh, in his story um, that he could speak to God and for, and for God. Um, and he had all these various revelations um, you know, that he would have via praying. Now, the interesting thing about, you know, and we'll learn more about the story, um, when, you know, Mormonism started under Joseph Smith, it was during the Second Great Awakening. Now, this is a period uh, in the early 1800s where basically what you have is um, a lot of social, social, cultural change in the United States. Um, there's a lot of ambiguity and confusion about what society... I mean, this is all like, um, you know, we just gotten more or less, you know, sovereignty from um, England. Um, so there's just a lot of... There's an identity crisis, let's just say, in, in, the, United, in the United States. Okay, um, and there was a revival in religion um, uh, because people needed to have faith in, in something. Um, Joseph Smith, he uh, took it, you know, I don't want to say took advantage of this, but um, he was able to write the Book of Mormon when he was 24 years old. Okay, um, it took him seven years. And the interesting thing about the Book of Mormon is that it's, uh, it's a, an American story that combines history, a concept of history, and theology or religious beliefs into one story. But the idea, the, the idea is that Jesus um, came to and lived in America, okay? And that's what's really important. It was written in 19, uh, excuse me, 1830, and it's an American story. It's an American take on the story of the Bible in, 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 in many ways. Uh, in 1835, he wrote Doctrine and Covenants, and Doctrine, um, you know, uh, is, you know, and covenants is still um, pretty prominent in the Mormon religion. Um, but anyways, he wrote that five, five, years, five years later after, after the Book of Mormon um, was, came out. Now, now listen, uh, Joseph Smith was a controversial figure. He was a convicted, um, you know, what they called money digger. Um, and basically, he had been convicted of tricking people 
um, that he could look into glass, that he could look into glass and he could find treasure. So people would pay him and he, and he would look in the glass and show them where treasure was. Now, he never did this. Um, but, he, you know, he was able to manipulate people into believing things. Let's just, let's just say that. Um, he also ran for United States president, and he really believed in plural marriage, and he was an avid polygamist. He had over 40, uh, 40 wives. And Under the Banner of Heaven really goes into this. So this is some, idea, like some bits and pieces about um, Joseph Smith. Now, the Church of Latter-day Saints um, is interesting. It's Christian, but not Christian. So... Uh, there's a lot of Christian beliefs in, in, in the Book of Mormon within the religion, but most Christians don't consider Mormons Christ, Christians, if that, if that makes sense. Um, the main issue here is, like, you know, you have Catholicism where, you know, the only figures who can communicate with God are, like, bishops and popes and cardinals and priests. Um, and... You know, then you have, you know, Christianity, Protestant Christianity, where um, people can pray and communicate to God. Well, within the Mormon religion, not only can you talk to God, but you can become God. So Brigham Young and Joseph Smith and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Warren Jeffs, you know, if you want to think of a, some, <clears throat> someone more recently, um, you know, they became gods. They can, within the religion, you can become gods, okay, which is really important um, part of the system. Now, uh, you also are baptized in, so you must be baptized. And you, there are 141 temples. These are holy buildings, so us Gentiles are not allowed to, well, us Gentiles meaning this Gentile, you're not allowed to enter those buildings um, unless you're uh, Mormon. You're not allowed in, in, into those, those. So those are the most holiest of holy uh, worshiping, worshiping buildings. Okay. Then you have what are called wards and branches, which are s smaller. You know, um, not you know, obviously not not temples or holy buildings, but they're smaller worship centers. And the church uh, is also a non a nonprofit, like other churches. Um, you know. It's, an, it's considered a nonprofit. There are roughly 15 million global adherents to the religion, um, and the United States has 6.1 million, Mexico 1.2, and Brazil 1.1. Um, there are missionaries all over the world, and the Mormons are commonly known for proselytizing, which is basically trying to convert other people. You've probably had <clears throat> um, maybe people come to your house, uh, to talk to you about Mormonism. Um, you may have someone on campus that comes up to you and talks to you about, you know, about it, whatever. Uh, going on missions, you know, um, if you watched or went to the Book of Mormon or know anything about it, is, you know, you'll go, um, <clears throat> I can't remember how old you are within the Mormon church, but you, you I think maybe 18. I don't know. Um, but you go, you go away. It could be in the United States, another part of the United States, another country where your whole mission there is to, to proselytize, to convert people over to the church. Now, Mormons are not allowed to uh, consume ad addictive substances like caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, marriage of hoo hoo. Uh, whatever, okay, and many Mormons wear temple garments, aka the magic uh, underwear, um, which is crazy if you think of being in Utah and wearing basically fucking long johns uh, in summertime, under pants, like you're not supposed to show skin, um, which is a, ma a major part, um, and you know, again, there's variations to this, like how essentially fundamentalist people are with these beliefs. So the fundamentalist Church of Latter-day Saints are the people who, uh, you know, sew their own dresses, wear the magic, you know, uh, the, the, the holy garments, the temple garments, um, are in plural marriages, etc. Um, 
I think the thing, though, is, you know, the important thing of the religion is that, you know, God speaks to his children and he answers their prayers. So, God can speak directly to you, and if you pray hard enough for something, it will, it will happen. 